So I was browsing Amazon the other day and I came across this camera for $30. $30. What surprised me is not that there's a camera available for $30, there are plenty of them out there and I've even reviewed a couple before. But it surprised me that this camera has the same sensor and image processor as the Suku C30 and the SJCam SJ5000X Elite for 30 bucks. So I was all amped up to make this video and be like, Hey everyone, I found a great camera deal, look at this, it's got the same image sensor and processor as these much more expensive cameras. Unfortunately, my expectations were a little bit too high. Keep in mind that for $30, it is a working camera and the video quality is actually okay in most cases. But if this camera is at its regular price, which is $50, I don't think that it's really worthwhile. I made this video as a real quick thing to say, hey, go and take a look at this, especially if you were looking for a cheap action camera that's pretty much disposable in terms of price. But I'm going to do a full review later and you'll see what I mean in terms of the video quality being an issue. Let's also talk about a couple of the other downsides quick before you go and jump into this camera head first. When unboxing this camera, the first thing I notice is that the waterproof case is the cheapest quality one out there. There's no additional thing to hold the latch in place, so if you accidentally bump it, it could pop open. Also, the camera rattles a little bit because it doesn't sit very well inside of the case, which is picked up by the audio. Speaking of audio, the camera doesn't exactly pick up, well, much of anything to say the least. If you want any quality sound, you're going to have to use an external recorder. The biggest problem with this camera is that there's a little bit of a haze to everything. It's almost as if the lens isn't exactly as clear as other cameras because everything ends up being a little bit grayish and not very vibrantly colored. The gyro stabilization on this camera doesn't really seem to work. Out of the box, I tried enabling it, but it kept shutting itself off. So I wrote light down and asked, hey, what's up with this? And they sent me a firmware update. Well, that firmware update actually broke the 60 frames per second video, and it didn't exactly fix the gyro. Sometimes the gyro works now, but sometimes inexplicably it'll turn itself off. So you got to keep an eye on that. Also, you might have noticed that I mentioned that it broke the 60 frames per second video. Well, what happens now is that the camera films in 30 frames per second, and it just doubles those frames to make them 60 frames per second. Alright, well I've criticized this camera a lot, and this was supposed to just be a quick first look video. What do I like about the camera? I mean, you're not going to see it when I was recording, but there was a big pause there, because I had to stop and think for a second. What do I actually like about this camera? Well, the 1080p footage is alright. The 2K footage is alright. You know, video is okay. For 30 bucks, I'm not complaining. For 50 bucks, I know there's better. Should you buy this camera? If you're looking at a camera for a kid, or some other situation where you just need a cheap, disposable camera, yeah, it'll do fine. But curb your expectations before buying it. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe or follow me on Twitter to see the full review when it's released.